Good morning, RuneScape. I have just seen that RuneScape posted about the earliest sailing tech demo reveal that's possible. Of course, this is straight from their tweet that they just put. They got a little emoji, currents, wind, collision, ship size, FAQ, partnered with Gentle Tractor, who I'm not sure who that is, but maybe help make the blog. And they just posted a beautiful sailing blog. I mean, it's big. They even got a table of contents. I was going to scroll down and just go through some of this stuff, but we can just sit through the table of contents. They got navigation mechanics, navigational basic ship sizes, navigation and progression, sea scale, type of sea, map boundaries, collision, and weather. This is without a doubt one of the biggest things RuneScape has trying to accomplish is to make a brand new skill and, of course, to make it good. <laughs> like It seems like a lot to do. I mean, it's not just, you know, uh, mechanics... You got to have uh, how big the sizes are of the ships. You got to have the, the scale. How are you going to travel to places? I mean, this is a pretty big update. And before we jump in to this update, to this blog for sailing, to learn everything you need to know about what's about to hit RuneScape hopefully soon, can we give a shout out to Old School RuneScape team? Beautiful blogs, bro. Oh my God. They have been killing it with the blogs, man. Ever since the Winter Summit. Phenomenal work. Phenomenal work, dude. Ever since the COVID pandemic, they have been busting their hunt, bro. Bringing us just amazing updates and breaking it down very beautifully. And I just wanted to give them a shout out before we dived in because I, you know, I've been a RuneScaper for a while and this is the best I've seen them at blogging and keeping us up to date. So let's jump in. Topic one, navigational mechanics and sea scale. Okay, we're kicking it off with the topic of navigating, which seems to be the biggest thing for people. It, they're not going to care if they can get on a boat. They want to care if it's going to be skillful to move around. Is it going to be fun? Is it going to make the skill, right? If navigation is bad, the skill sucks. Dead in the water. No pun intended. Before we get into the details, it's worth zipping back to our initial refinement blog. Which I, Did we cover the refinement blog? Possibly. I either did this on a podcast or I did this in front of you guys. I think it was a podcast. This uh, just kind of talks about the rewards, lore, and how they're refining the skill. So not a lot to cover there because now we're finally in the refinement stage. We're going to see what they've been refining. And look at this. The sailing skill navigation of the sea. Introductions. Ooh. Welcome to the first step of the refining uh, the sailing skill where, the, where we'll be covering the topics of navigation and the sea. The refinement process itself is being broken down into four stages. Uh, while there will be naturally be some overlap in each refinement topic, we want to stress that this post will be just focused on the basic fundamentals of ships and how they could control and how the wider ocean might interact with them. Most notably, it will be not it will not be looking at anything to do with XP gains, training methods, or gameplay content. So, you know, they got to build the foundation before they can go to the next step. And I always think that's important, especially when it's their first ever skill they've ever added. Oh, look at that. It jumps around. And says, Whoa. Okay. Hold her down. This is some new technology right here. <laughs> what the hell? So, uh, refinement steps, navigate the sea, core, system, and gameplay loops, rewards, lore, and integration, and final summary and pull blog. So let's step in. Look, we got a little thing here we can click on. Here are the ports. So I don't think they've changed any. Well, that boat looks huge. Maybe that is a bit of a change. Is that the normal port? I'm a nerd, but I cannot remember. I know it's the normal layout. So to begin sailing, you'll need to board your ship from somewhere. Obviously going to be a port. Uh, ports will would be the primary access point to the sailing skill that would allow you to embark, disembark, build ships, and customize your ship. Perform repairs. So there's going to be a burning of supplies and then hire crew, like a, like the butler for your house, and more. Ports serve as a natural balance between a uh, balancing mechanic for the skill too, as you wouldn't be able to simply get on or off your ship for anywhere else. Yeah, it would make sense. You get off your boat and you're in Brock. You know, <laughs> little teleport uh, animation. So here are islands. One of the more exciting parts, you got navigation, then we got the islands. The islands, you go to places. There's been a lot of rumors of what you can do with the islands, bro. Let's see what they got in store. Uh, having a port there wouldn't make thematic sense, like on an uninhabited island. For these circumstances, there would be some kind of landing site, like a mooring port. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Mooring? Nah, I don't care. Situated on the island, these... 
would be allow you to move freely between your ship and land. Okay, they don't cover islands just yet, sadly. It just shows you that you can get to islands and port there, even without a port, which you know, makes sense. Obviously, you want to explore. Not every island is going to have a port. Once you've acquired a ship and boarded it from a port, you'll be able to start sailing out to the open seas and using your navigational system. Look at that big-ass shark, bro. <laughs> Isn't that badass, bro? Isn't that badass? Look at this, man. Yo, I love the gra- I love it, dude. I love this little graphic down there. So good. Uh, navigational overview, point and click, thankfully. that's I think that's what we were all hoping for. When it comes to control of the ship, many were thinking we could have explored, including WASD keys, kind of like Overwatch or other FPS shooters. However, based on the community consultation, it became clear that point and click is the way to go. With that being said, most intuitively control scheme, that's a natural fit for the game, while working greatly across both PC and mobile. Can you imagine mobile sailing around? That's badass, dude. Shows him fishing, by the way. Could be a bit of spoilers here. I think we all assumed that fishing was going to be tied into sailing, though. I mean, you're in the middle of the ocean. Uh, player characters, we also agreed that players who felt it was important to retain control of the character at all times. Hmm. Rather than transforming your character into a ship, which would have been hilarious, whenever you were in the ocean, a staple of old school RuneScape is having your character interact with your surroundings in the world, and so sailing would be no different. So you'd be able to move around the boat while moving the boat? Or would you be able to move the boat while people move around your own boat? Uh, I guess we'll find out. After boarding the ship, simply click the ship's wheel to enter navigational mode. So, okay. Yeah. Navigation mode, your camera will be centered on the ship rather than your character, and all left-click interactions on the ocean will be result in your ship moving, not your character. So once you're in navigational mode, then you... Okay, so you can't move around while you're moving the boat, but if you wanted to, you can exit navigation mode and walk around, which I was kind of assuming, but it's good that we know. At any point, you can click the ship's wheel again, exit navigational mode, and the camera will recenter on your character, and you will have full access to all of your usual character interactions while even being able to walk freely around your ship. What happens if you, like, teleport out of your boat and you don't dock it? Is your boat gone? <laughs> I don't know. Alongside this image post will be a blog and video presenting the showcase. Yeah, they actually do have a video all the way down here. Uh, I haven't watched any of this video. Look at that Rakesy's One Bill series. Get that out of here, brother. So it's going to kind of go over that. I mean, you can see it a little bit there. So I'm excited to see what it looks like. They have done such good work. It is happening so fast. I think everyone was used to not having any updates for so long that they r forgot that RuneScape is an actual OG company that does what they uh, intend to do. Facilities. You get a little bathroom on your boat. It won't just be the ship's wheel you can interact with. Ships will have a great number of interactive facilities on them with larger ships offering up more facilities. This includes everything from cannons, cargo holds, crow's nests, or even ship kitchens. I thought they said ship kit kittens. I was thinking like groupies. Uh, the crow's nest might let you detach your camera and view a greater distance to help you with making naviga navigational decisions. Oh, that's going to be cool. I'm thinking from a content creator's perspective, like a nice scenery shot of the open ocean. Oh, yeah. It's going to be badass. Some of you guys might want to take the sea, take to the sea on your own little sailboats, while others might want to wish to set sail with a whole crew of players or NPCs on a giant galleon. So why not both? In fact, we're proposing three unique ship categories, small, large, and colossal badass, dude. Badass colossal baby, yes sir. I was I know they have small and large, but colossal man it reminds me of some big ass Pokemon. Having different types of vessels also allow for unique gameplay opportunities. Smaller vessels might be faster, and larger might be slower, but more durable to the resistance of the elements, which is gonna play a part. You know, they they were bringing up random events out in the ocean, environment. Uh, so you're gonna be dealing with a lot of a lot of stuff out there. Ship info, number of facilities, blah, 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 blah. So here's the differences here. So a humble Asgardian sailboat, a powerful Fremenic longship, and a magnificent Corendian galleon. Uh, so Solo obviously is a one-person one ship here. You can have two to three facilities. Okay, okay. One floor. And then a large one is uh, four to six facilities. I don't know how many people you can fit on a large boat. I wonder if there's a, a, a max amount or if you just stack it up. 
uh, two floors on the uh, bigger boat. That's nice. And then, of course, in the Colossal, we got eight to ten facilities, three floors of boat. And, yeah, looking good. All right, what's next here? Turning circles. While the simple point-and-click nature of a ship movement will place it on a familiar grounds of character movement, we feel it's important for sailing to have its own unique qualities, too. One popular player suggestion that we like to incorporate arc shaping turning circles to make movement smoother and more ship-like. If we did this, we could let smaller ships turn quickly while larger ships would turn more slowly. I think it's not only humorous, but also the best idea. <laughs> I just find it humorous because I imagine some big-ass boat not turning at all. Uh, these days, our engine support, movement speeds, 0.5 tile increments, allowing for speed slower than one, faster than two, I'm not going to tell you I understand that. A whole host of additional factors might affect your sailing speed too, such as your ship size, the weight, the wind direction, or sea currents. So wind direction, apparently going to be a thing. I don't know I feel. I We'll see. I, I, it'll probably be good. I just, I don't know. I get, that sounds annoying. And then sea currents, I was expecting something like that as well. Perpetual motion. Look at how much they thought into a point-and-click boat turning game. Look at this. There's also the possibility to offer up forms of ship momentum. With the right kind of upgrades, your ship may no longer come to a complete stop at a selected destination tile. Instead, continue on the same direction until you block or drop your anchor. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Okay, good. Obvious boat mechanics. You can't just stop in the middle of the sea. You gotta just sway into a nice stop with the anchor. Collision? I was not expecting collision. Navigating on land, your character automatically paths around obstacles and scenery. We imagine sailing would keep you could keep things consistent with your ship doing the same thing while you're at sea. To avoid gameplay bottlenecks, multiple player ships would be able to share the same space. So no collisions. Just like players do on land, the only difference between player ships we would likely turn into shadows as they pass through each other. That said, there's still the possibility to explore situational blocking and collision. Perhaps special PvP ocean areas could exist in which you can't pass for other player ships, creating a unique ship-based PvP combat experience. And that's what I'm saying, man. Like, they were talking about how you could trade on a boat and go to islands and sell your shit or whatever. Like, they were hinting at the possibility of certain mechanics like that. They didn't tell us straight up. And I was thinking if PvP you could block off, like, a really powerful moneymaker. So when a ship has to go through in a PvP area, they gotta go through your boat and you're making like this Snorlax blocking path to where they need to fight you. I just, I like that. I like that, right? If you're a bigger boat, you have to go through. If you're a smaller boat, you can go around, you know, because you're faster. Mm, man, I hope so, dude. I hope so. But PvP is not on the table just yet. They're just teasing us. Uh, the current map. So in order to properly make sailing feel like it's part of the game, the ocean you'll be sailing, uh, the oceans you'll be sailing on are the very same ones you'll see in the base world map. No instances are being whisked away to a different scale zone. I really want to be able to fish in Catherby while boats are just slowly moving through, and probably they're typing. You'll probably see like in the distance people just doing random typing, and I really want that to happen. In addition, we would like to expand and improve the seas so there's more exciting there's more exciting than just seeing the same blue texture everywhere. So there's more exciting I that might I don't know. Uh, world scale. On some level we have to accept that the current game world has unusual and inconsistent scaling. For example, we have some mountains that are no bigger than buildings and certain towns that lore-wise are miles apart, being within a few tiles of each other. Instead of undertaking the drastic and nostalgia-breaking rework of all land and sea, we look to concentrate on ensuring that sailing ships themselves feel appropriately sized and scaled. They're thinking a lot about this, and it's something you really, like, it's... It's like you'd think they'd put this amount of thought into it, and they're putting more into every appropriate thing they need to be putting that thought into. So I'm, I'm a little impressed there. Ocean zones, three levels. So they got shallow seas, open seas, deep seas, dude. Just like Gertie's mom. We look at categorizing all oceans into three distant zones. For example, small ships would be best in shallow seas, large ships would be in open seas, and colossal would be strong enough to survive the deep seas. So not every boat could survive the deep seas. Or maybe it's just such a struggle, like the monsters you face or the environment is so bad that if you're on a colossal ship, 
you're 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 better off. Where it's maybe it's doable in a large ship, or maybe solo mission will be out there in a in a in a one v one ship here trying to make some content. Exciting weather conditions, bro. I didn't know RuneScape had a weather. I thought it was always bright and sunny unless you're in the wilderness. One feature of the ocean and learning to navigate it would be dealing with the certain weather conditions. The player versus environment effects. This could include dynamic things like wind or static things like currents that affect your speed and ability to traverse certain areas. The kind of weather you're encountering would differ and increase in ferocity depending on the ocean zone you're in. An important thing to know is that we don't want the skill to feel cumbersome or annoying, so it's unlikely for these systems to be overly present early game basic sailing. That's that was my understanding is like wind levels it makes sense but it feels also quite annoying unless it's super simple and i think that's what we got to work with is make the struggles simple so that you're able to overcome these struggles without deeply thinking about it and getting confused but at the same time there is still somewhat of a challenge that is fun not like agility where there's no challenge and it's annoying Ocean boundaries, bro. By the way, are we still going? We got one more slide here, man. What a what a damn sun goes deep. Ocean islands, a number of islands that are otherwise quest locked would still remain as such with the simple answer. If you try to sail there before completing the respective quest, the locals would simply prevent you from docking. It reminds me of that uninhabited island that is still <laughs> inhabited by people that have no idea we're here. Right, they're they're studying them, and every time they come close, they'll chuck spears at the people. So that's pretty much, they'll give you that treatment. Uh, mysterious locations here, and other issues regarding places that are supposed to be unknown to you prior to the certain point in the game, such as Crandor. One solution could be when approaching Crandor before unlocking Dragon Slayer quest, the island might be shrouded in a dense fog bank, or perhaps Elvgarg herself might swoop down and rain fire upon you. So they want you to unlock them with sailing, and if you somehow get to that island without sailing it'll be uh, kind of like a unlocked super smash bro character just just sitting there black uh, skill progression existing locations wouldn't be the only time we consider using different types of ocean boundaries some would instead be tied to sailing skill progression requiring high levels and ship improvements in order to advance a reef might be might require a stronghold to pass through while a dangerous sea monster might need better cannons to take down very interesting, very interesting. Map edges. So obviously Ocean has a lot of map edges. Here be uh, not a lot. There can only be so much content in the Ocean, although, before you hit an inevitable edge of the world map. Although, staring out at a vast black void isn't a new experience in old school RuneScape. <laughs> it might seem a little jarring while out at sea. So, as an alternative, we could look at implementing a form of endless ocean populated with generic scenery. I think it'd be cool if you had, like, fucking whales and, and stuff. Sorry, I'm not trying to cuss in this video uh, for, the, for the boys out there, but just, you know, maybe there's, like, some animation when you look out at endless oceans that's just got, like, currents and random events that you can't see, just kind of like an area of a map you want to unlock, but you can't go there. Just leaves you longing for more. Could be very fun. All right, last page of this quick little uh, info infographics here. So, as a quick reminder, the following isn't a navig isn't a summary of sailing skills as a whole, just the basic navigation and sea aspects. Yeah, there's a, still a ton they got to go over. It's just a bare foundation that they can build off of. So, sailing can be done either alone or with friends, starting at a po port by boarding a ship and interacting with the ship's wheel. Uh, so, we already went all through this, kind of like a. Uh, a summary here. The sailing progression will also likely start out very simple and early game being on a small vessel in shallow waters and mostly focused on basic movement. Man, can you imagine the vibe of just sitting out in the ocean in a one-by-one -one boat just fishing? Just fishing, bro. Maybe a little cargo hold you can put the fish in for your boat and just travel on back. Uh, as you progress through the mid-game, you'll gain additional options to go sailing on a larger vessel with greater complexity and accessing more of the ocean. Finally, you'll reach the late-game sailing experience, where you can choose to embark on an adventurous navigational journey into the deepest, most dangerous parts of the water, while managing a colossal-sized vessel. Ultimately, the way you approach things will be up to you. Well, that brings us to the end of our first refinement topic on navigation and sea. We hope it helps paint a picture of what the first steps of sailing skill could look like. I like it. 
I like it. Great job, Jagex. Honestly, great job. Uh, and then down here, they have a little video for us. And I think I was looking at this blog, and I think a lot of it's just them going over a lot of stuff. So this, the blog's big, but I think we just went over all of it in those infomercials here. Yeah, pretty much, which is good, which is good, because there's no pictures down here, and I like pictures. So very nice. Um, let's go ahead and watch that video of what sailing looks like for the first time. Why not? Hey all, I'm Mod Nin, joined by Mod up, Elena man? to give you a first look at our early exploration into sailing tech. Very Often interesting. Final, but this video... So here's what a boat would look like? Or is this the boat from Lunar Island? ...is intended to show you more about the tech and challenge some of the misconceptions players might have around what is technically possible for us to do. So, let's jump into it. Boats are a familiar concept me, in guard. old school. They're all over the place once you start looking. That player is able to do... Oh, look at that! Yo, sorry, I got excited. So that's so. this is actually a boat. This is where it's at. The rest were like other boats. Look at that little boat. How cool is that, bro? You can see a small boat. Oh, he's moving with the ship's wave. That's how, dude, I don't, I don't know. It's, I, we're in 2023. Why am I excited about simple water mechanics? Because it's RuneScape, dude. We don't have water mechanics. Look at that. He's and rocking around. Look at the animation, dude. That player is able to do regular interactions while on the boat and see other players doing activities on the dock. This player is also in control of the boat and can use point and click movement to traverse the waters. Please note Oh, that there's no wheel. The scheme are not final, <laughs> but we're using it here to Wait, demonstrate what? how a player can be What the hell you can alk? There's no wheel, brother. What the Yo. part of a moving entity. That boat's a little cramped though. Let's give our guy a bigger vessel. This one's got quite a bit more room. I feel like that's still the solo boat. It doesn't feel like a large boat. Maybe to carry a treasure chest or some fishing supplies. Yeah, I was going to say they got fish barrels right here. So maybe you can use your fish barrels from that fishing mini game to hold your fish in your boat and then a banking chest here as well. Or enough space to bring a pet. Maybe this boat is a bit more durable or can carry Who is more cargo. Navigating this thing, dude. Are you the specifics of what utilities boats will have is not decided yet, but they can contain. Oh, so if you click on the boat, you move. But if you click on the sea, your boat moves. Okay, I was under the impression you had to click on a wheel. Interactable objects like anywhere else in the game. We also think sailing could make. Oh, here's the bigger vessel. Activity. We want to let you invite your friends aboard so you can sail the high seas together. On even larger ships, you might need a whole crew working together to man the cannons, hoist the sails, keep lookout, and steer safely through the waves. We're able to have groups of players aboard boats, which could open up lots of gameplay opportunities for multiplayer sailing content. What did you guys think? We'd love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Yo, this is what I, what the hell? This is what I wanted. This is what I wanted, bro. You're just fishing, and then you, well, I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> I, I would like to see that too. But can you imagine just, you're just fishing in Caffery, and every once in a while you look up, and there's something like that going on. You know they're going to be typing to you too, like, hey, peasants, where's your boat? Oh, man, let's go, dude. Sailing's coming in, baby. It's looking amazing. That's the latest on sailing. Hopefully you enjoy it. I'll keep you up to date more with everything else going on in Old School RuneScape since Bounty Hunter is right around the corner and much more. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next episode.